dropping the support as well. It was, of course, one of the options that you had highlighted. But notably, after playing the Nami yesterday and not having a good time, he's gone for something with a lot more autonomy. The Rakan can start off engages for your team, has a lot more mobility as well, and hopefully will let Raxo and Cody Sun together have a much better game. It also is a really nice roaming champion in case you want to try and group up with Memento later to help deal with this Wukong that I'd expect to be going into the jungle. Yeah, so Akali Bank coming through. I was just looking at it real quick, but then remembered back mm -hmm. that Bat Lulu has been playing this in the top side before. So it's uh, it's not completely unseen coming through from Mirage where they also had a close game. But um, the matchup between specifically Rakan and Nautilus is not going to be so much about, you know, the bottom side of the map, the 2v2. It's more about getting out of the map instead because Rakan don't do specifically well into champions that can lock him down with the CC. And going into the second ban phase, I mean, EDSAA just not taking away a single jungler. So I think you can just open up with a Sinsao here. If you want to go for the disengage option, you get into Crescent Strike. Good into champions like Twitch. Good into champions that wants to build range, which is currently what it's looking like BDSA is looking for. Yeah, and, and with the with the Crescent Guard providing so much value, I mean, it's got to, it's the obvious choice, but I suppose Mirage go with something One else. Of the two. What do you what do you think of the Viego here? Given how much value the Zinzel could have provided, what is Viego giving you? Well, I mean, just generally as a like a skirmisher, he's still one of the strongest one you currently have. Um, and we've seen the Viego into the Wukong countless of times. Just when we started going into the durability patch, it was Wukong mm -hmm. first pick into an immediate answer of the Viego. But the Viego would always lose out on the matchup, so I still give the favor to having the Wukong. And now having the Viego, you require to skirmish around it, which means that Rememto and Raxo, they need to get up there and find their leads together. Now we've got the Nar and the Ari, so two pretty darn good lanes, especially with Ari getting a lot of autonomy back from the Azir. Should be able to match the push a lot better than Swain would, although still, I would expect to fall behind. Matty uh, grabbing the Nar for Adam in the top side, though, does change things. Since the Camille is locked in here, it's a top lane that can get pretty darn skirmish heavy in a game that we're already expecting to be very bloody. Yeah, I 100% agree with that sentiment. It's It can be very Camille favored if you mess it up, but there's also opportunities in the early game where Nar can strike. Once again, he's a ranged champion into a melee, so you get to take priority a little bit on the laning phase, which also means you can try and dictate some of the trades if you get into a bush, you get to proc your W, and you just run away without being hit by the hookshot. Um, but of course, as soon as that level 6 comes through, and if you have a jungler coming up too, specifically a skirmish heavy jungler like the Viego that likes to brawl, can be a little bit dicey uh, from the top lane of Adam, who we have seen before, overextend a little too much, which is kind of like, it's the good side of Adam, where sometimes he has fine plays he shouldn't be able to pull off, and then the other times where he's like, oh, I guess I was too overextended, I'm not not died to a gank. But I think there's scaling aspect from both teams here. You get to twitch into the Seri. Usually this matchup is a little bit tricky because it really just depends on who gets to engage first in the sense that if Twitch is invisible, he opens up with his ultimate. Seri is not fast enough uh, before she's stacked up and will just get blown. But if Seri starts the team fight where she gets all the movement speed going, if we actually come into this very humorous situation where Seri is so fast that when Twitch ult, his auto attacks can't connect. That oh, usually yes. never happens <laughs> because they're not locked on. But that, that's just like one of the things you can take into account if Twitch is late to a team fight. I totally forgot that that was <laughs> that that was the interaction that Twitch's auto attacks can do that. I hope I hope to God we get to see that, but I do know that we're gonna get some action. So let's see it in just a minute when we hit the rift. back hello hello friends there we go <laughs> on to the rift i was like on to the rift let's do it we have made it happen and uh well let's see where let's see where the first couple fights end up breaking out i'm not expecting anything level one but i'm expecting a lot more vision than we saw last game between Optlon and ldl uh, sorry ldlc as there we go there yeah finally got that last letter <laughs> as, uh, I, as jungle tracking, who puts four really letters funny. into a name as well? Usually, we have an abbreviation with three letters, right? Like, what? What? What's this? With right? Four? That's crazy. Caught me off guard, especially the first time I saw it. I, I, having recently dealt with a lot of people that were in school, my my sister who recently graduated, I, I was oh, thinking L Doc. Yeah, I'll let her know. <laughs> 
expecting to lose her mind. I'm... She, uh... I don't know. I don't know. I could talk about my sister, but I feel like it'd be a lot of... <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, we should probably yeah. just dive it into I, the I, game I, instead. I, I was going to go tangent this, but you know what? I was thinking about the vision. We're talking about the vision. It's fine. We're good. Raptors are warded up, and uh, that's going to be the little bit of information that BDS Academy have. Solid. I like it. Yeah. I think we might be in for a little bit of a slow early game as well, just due to the fact that... They're set up in bot lane from the side of BDSA, but even then, what you're setting up for is a Wukong, and when he doesn't really have that level 6, it, it can get a little bit tricky for him to solidify, you know, a, a kill coming through unless a really bad trade has been taken. It's the same with the Twitch. While you can go for the early trades, he definitely is a champion that excels when he hits that level 6, and you can commit to all-ins where you outrange the opponent. And the same for the mid lane, you know, they're just going to be getting their AP items. They're going to be trading back and forth. Ari's wave clear is not actually as good as a lot of people anticipate it to be. Just due to the fact that the base damage is not too high. You usually start with Corruption Pot 2. So it's going to take a few points in your queue before you have solid wave clear, which kind of gives the favor over to the Asir that we've seen already two times a day now, being the one with the dictation of the push. And by extension, I mean, Me Memento should have a lot easier of a time as well. Already, though, the bot lane going in favor of BDS for the moment, as they found themselves a singular nice trade. But there was a parallel here that I wanted to, to draw attention to between Athlon and BDS, especially in this game, where they're so level 6 reliant or they get so much access to power at level six that we'll see them waiting until then to likely pull a lot of triggers but it's so important that when they hit those level six the plays are found fast because otherwise much like Oplon you could lose control of the game. Yeah I think that's a, a very uh, solid argument as well. I, I will still say that I feel like both teams have some good aspect of scaling in their roster here though where they won't really fall apart if they're you know 2k behind. They still have um, their own execution to play towards through their composition. Um, you know, you get the Seri, you get the SC as well with the longer range, but if I should favor one, I would definitely give it to the side of PDSA. Having a Twitch that can open up on you and the team fighting they have there can be very scary. But there's also an entire different thing, and that's this top side. Uh, you talked about Adam overextending, and by God, it's happened. This Nar is going nowhere fast, and first blood going over to Bad Lulu is going to be a big oh boon my God. for the side of Raj Eliandra. That's such a bad place to die as well. He's going to be having to expend the TP, but it's, it's a threes right outside of Bad Lulu's turret, which means that Adam is going to be losing experience as well. Mm. Momentum haven't actually been spotted here. Adam might be walking over to the tri bush to place a ward immediately, but no. Actually just going to step up here. We could see a return gang if Memento feels like it, but he's not going to cancel that recall. He's going to go back to base, and he's going to shop a little bit. I appreciate the the way that Memento played that as well, knowing that his top laner had to back. Didn't go for the greedy play of trying to secure that Scuttlecrab. Instead, you're going to have plenty of time for that later. You've already won yourself a fight up towards the top side, and things are good for, for Mirage Eliandra right now. No reason to push it too much, and now should be able to get the Scuttlecrab on the bot side with the faster reset that they had compared to Shio. Yeah, and it also means that he's going to be pathing back up towards that top side. I think, crucially for Adam, at least he didn't expand his flash. That could have been an even worse situation. But as soon as we hit that 6 minute 30 seconds mark, that's usually where we start to see the solo laners get level 6. Um, so that's kind of where you want to see momentum match his pathing with the top side to set up a play where Adam's not going to be ready for it. He should be a little bit behind in experience just due to the fact that Bad Lulu get an experience lead when he gets the kill. But also with the wave that Adam was pushing in, well, there should be more experience going over to Bad Lulu. Already a bit of a roam from Dream Race as well. Clears out Vision that was set up by Mirage Eliandra, trying to take away a little bit of uh, their momentum, we could call it. However, with Raxo matching it, we are getting the fight over this support position that I was thinking of earlier, specifically when mentioning this Rakan. Raxo gets the chance to show us the playmaking ability on this champion, and matching is going to be the first step in that, especially with Mirage Eliandra having picked up a nice reset recently. Yeah, I think that matters a lot, specifically because the bot lane, you know, it wasn't about the 2v2 as we already talked about a little bit earlier, so having the supports come out of the map first is going to be something that influences the rest of the matchup as well. So now that BDA is scared to get to, you know, have a crash down towards the bottom lane, they can move Dreamer Race out of the map again. He can go for a reset if that's what he's looking for. But it gives them the kind of tempo to play around for them to make a play. If they want to move into the enemy jungle, drop a ward, anything like that, they just get to play around with the pressure. They might just use this pressure to start up the Drake for themselves. 
Quick thing to note as well in the mid lane, Mirage Eliandra lost Rang Jun's ultimate trying to make a play onto Reeker. Both of them expending that bit of a cooldown, but with Azir being, Azir's being so crucial in these team fights, I mean, it just gives a lot more space, even adding to the pressure that BDS already had. First Hextech Drake secured is really good for them, especially with the scaling that we're expecting them to have. Hextech Dragon is going to feel really nice, but this could go wrong over towards the bot side. Maddie getting knocked up is not something that I'm hoping to see repeated. It was a solid little cheeky moment when Rax to get aggressive. Re uh, Dream is a little slow on the anger to stop the knock up there themselves, but I think it's fine. There's not really going to be the damage to actually come through with them. They also have the heal and ignite on Dream Raid's side, which kind of give them some things to play for. Exhaust again twitch, twitch is a really tricky thing because you need to time it with the moment where he uses the expunge or the value out of that summon as well is actually not quite a lot. So you get, of course, have to mimic a, a like kind of against um, what is worth when it, it is expended. We're likely going to see that happening really soon, especially with the fact that uh, like you said, level 6 is being hit around the map, are soon going to be starting to be translated into the bot side. Both junglers paying a lot of attention up to this top side, though, knowing, like we identified earlier, that it is the point where a lot of action can happen. But Memento, having just been up there, is taking a reset, believing it to be safe, and Bad Lulu, fortunately, has the wave crashing under their tower. This is so good for Mirage Leandra. Yeah, so 7 minutes in now, level 7 on Badlulu, it is that little experience advantage that we talked about as well, but Memento just not in a position to capitalize on it, and even then, Shio, good pathing as I think uh, rightfully you highlight as well, going up there, getting the recall through, making sure Adam could crash the lane safely without having to worry about getting too over aggressive. Shio can now then back, he's picking up his spot side jungle, you can play towards the bottom side if you want to, or you can try and link up with Dream Race afterwards if you're looking for plays, there is a Herald spawning in just 5 seconds. I was, I was just wondering about that with Raxo recalling right now. It's a well-timed reset, but a little bit behind Dream Race's own. So if BDS want it, they can get a whole lot more pressure towards this objective than Mirage Eliandra will be able to. Already a control ward aggressively positioned for now. And Jungler hanging out towards the bot side. So we'll see what ends up happening. Yeah, I think the setup wasn't really there for it. You know, the late, late crash as well from the side of the top lane with Adam stayed around a little bit longer so there's no one really in a position to start off the Herald immediately and then of course Shio coming through with the recall he was taking the bot side camps first so to make sure he's not falling behind and kind of just rubber banding XP the more clear you get the higher XP uh, of course you want to stay like most efficient with that he had to clear out the bottom side first before he moved up towards the top side and that kind of disrupted the play a little bit and make well quite honestly everything slower towards the Rift Herald uh, I want to ask you a question since we were just hanging out in the mid lane as well. Reeker having picked up the Ari here is a little bit of a flashier champion than we're used to, but we were speaking specifically about uh, the, the melee champions that you were looking forward to. Do you feel like we still got a taste of that with the Ari pickup, or is it more, is it more usual? Uh, more, I'm missing the word. Well, it's not so reminiscent of the Riga that we used to see, like, either mm -hmm. he played Tia for Rise and influenced the side lanes, or he played champions where he kind of could to take control and have kill pressure in lane as well. That's not to say he can't do that in Ari. Reason why, as well, that he's not really a Riga champion from, like, the days where I used to watch him a lot in DRLs, is because Ari wasn't meta. So it's never yeah. a champion that I really got to see him on at that point in time. But I think players like Caps have already displayed that if you were mechanical prowess on this champion, is towards the S tier. Well, then you for sure can be a highlight player on this champion as well. So I think it's really up to Rika to prove that himself. Already having impact as well, being able to, with those points in Q, get push over Rangjun temporarily in the mid lane, securing the Rift Herald. That's two objectives now going over to BDS Academy. And though they lost their top laner early, they haven't really lost a whole lot since then. I like the way they're keeping themselves even. Yeah, now... Bat Lulu is going to be recalling. He's probably going to be TPing back. Adam, as Mechanarth, they could potentially be looking for a dive as soon as the TP comes back. And it'd be really curious to see if they're actually even up in for the Rift Hell here. That's not going to be the case. Adam with the Demolish will just be able to pick up some plating for himself. Memento, or Shield rather, goes for the recall. Wants to be in a decent spot for the Drake that's spawning in 30 seconds too to keep their neutral objective stacking going. Matty just hitting the recall as well. The bot lane is really important in this Drake setup, and this is a time when where Mirage have actually been able to secure 
that small advantage in the timing, especially with the memento already being towards the bot side. We could see this being a much more favored setup for them, and an ocean dragon in the early game does feel pretty good. It certainly helps you a little bit in the lane as perspective as well. Usually the Ocean Soul is great when you get to the deep mm -hmm. fight stage. You can kind of just heal up. But Ocean Soul as a first strike is actually one of the better ones just due to the fact that you can get some extra resources. And I think, honestly, PDSA quite slow on this play. I don't know if the pathing has been a little bit inefficient from the side of Shield, but he hadn't cleared out his blue buff and Grump. Because of this, they lose out the priority down towards the bottom side where Memento is in a good position to pick it up. They can now look to cross map on the top side BDSA. Um, as they have that Herald, but let's see what they actually go for. We've got Meganar as well. Bad Lulu knows that this should be happening. No Cyclone just yet, though. It's a game of chicken between this Camille and Wukong. Rift Herald gets channeled. That's going to be first tower going over in trade for the second dragon. Still a play that I'd say definitely favors BDS Academy. For now, it does, uh, mm -hmm. specifically with just like the instant money that they're able to get, the extra resources, and Adam specifically. I don't know if he's going for the Divine Sunder or Trinity Force looking like a Divine Sunder with the Kindle Gem. Um, where he can take some side lane pressure as well. If Adam pushes in that top side, he can move mid lane, he can move down towards the next Drakes. He should be the one having the first move against Bat Lulu. Notice how scared Mirage Eliandra having to play towards this bot side. Cody Sun's flash was forced in an earlier play. This is impacting really heavily the way that they're trying to play out this lane. And Matty does manage to get most of the CS there, but the hook is already very threatening. There's a play being made here. Memento's showing up. It's a two versus three in favor of Mirage. Matty getting flashed on right now. Stunned up. Heartbreaker should still be available, but it's not going to be used to finish off Matty as instead Adam shows goes up from left field. And that's what we talked about. Adam gets time to have to move now. What Adam could do now instead is move into the mid lane to pick up the farm that Rang during his positioning. And then Riku is going to be moving up to the top side instead. So they're not losing any resources on the map whatsoever. It's actually really intelligent rotations from BDSA here, which is allowing them to make plays that you're not going to be expecting while still not losing out on anything here. So yeah, solid. They had time time with no neutral objectives. Why not just commit to a play like that? And you get to counter gank without even using your jungler to do it. We've still got Shio farming up in the jungle, correcting some of the mis those mistakes from earlier and catching up economically to Memento, who had the advantage in the CS at least up until there. They're all very, very small advantages, though, for checking in across all of the lanes. This has been an extraordinarily even game. I think so, yeah. And I think a lot of it goes down to the fact that Mirage is not really looking to commit to any place. They're happy with scaling just due to the fact that they have an Asiya in the mid lane that, you know, loves uh, being able to match the range coming through for the likes of an Ari, short range like Na as well. Um, the only thing that's really outranging him is Matty, but even then he's going to have to step up uh, between the front line that will be the Rakan. And that just gives them idea that, you know, they don't have to do much. They just wait for the fact that Bad Lulu is going to be a side lane win condition. Or they really want to skirmish. But at some point, we have to see that as well. You can't just sit back forever. Because then BDSA is probably just going to be the team, you know, taking charge with their prior lanes. Shout out to Matty as well, by the way. Having recently completed the Blade of the Ruin King. Raxo found that out the hard way. Taking a big chunk off of the Twitch that now has got their first item spike. This is a really nice pickup. And while it isn't exactly like the Ruinans later where you start tearing through team fights, it does making, make it a lot easier to take these skirmishes. Especially with the fact that you're not waiting for that high price point of the Mythic. Yeah, that's a really good point as well. Now, just taking a look at the map state, Adam is pushing in the top side. He now gets to be in a position where he can move down to the middle lane again. But what they're really doing is just taking the small advantages they can get. You know, he's taking away some of the jungle camps. That in turn is going to make sure that not only does Adam get ahead, but he's also taking something from Momentum at the same time, which in turn kind of gives Shio something because he can still clear out his own camps comfortably and can give him a level lead against the opponent, opponent, uh, opponent jungler, of course. But one minute's time, and we should have the second Rift Herald respawn, and because of that, Dream Rise is through with the rotation. This butterfly effect of League of Legends continues to impact the Rift, as we've got two teams on opposite sides. BDS Academy are spotted out trying to gank Bad Lulu, but the Goon Squad is undeterred, marching up to make sure that Adam gets this crash. I think they'll be able to secure a second turret here, but Matty is left almost alone to defend this mid lane under not too much pressure just yet. Another tier two, or rather the first tier two tower falls, and it's another nice play for BDS Academy. 
this is going to be a little interesting because now 10 seconds until Rift Herald respawns. We still have less than 30 seconds or close to 30 seconds rather before the clouds break will spawn. So either we're going to be putting in a position where the teams are going to be cross mapping each other or they're finally going to look to head each other and try and find a team fight that's beneficial to them. But just due to the map state, I can only imagine that Mirage wants to stay on the bot side. You know, they got the push in bot side. They can move up in towards the Drake. They can try and set it off if they want to. It might look like they're forfeiting it just due to the fact that Bat Lulu is top lane. He doesn't have TP and that gives a man mass advantage of BDSA. Yeah, at this point, Adam is the one that really, more even so than Shio, has been dictating where the game is going. A, a top laner that traditionally overextends has been extending himself in unusual, pla uh, unusual places, but the right ones to keep this Wukong able to do whatever he likes as Adam provides free map pressure towards the bot side, moves into mid lane with Reeker. The solo lanes are coordinated exceptionally well. Let's see if it pays off as BDSA start up the dragon. Geo could look to try and contest. Memento gets caught. Big hook. This is good. Memento's ended up going down, but the dragon did go over to Mirage in the meantime. BDS, however, have very much won the fight as Bad Lulu finally arrives. Reeker does take a chunk, but it is the goon squad again that defeats Bad Lulu, sending him packing and flashing over the wall. Dragon to Mirage, but fight to BDSA. Yeah, Cody's son, I think with the ultimate splash AoE damage on towards the members and then the Drake actually secure that one. And then you have the rest of the fight going on with BDSA still being in a favorable position in terms of team fighting, picking up the two kills. But yeah, they get another Drake from Mirage, albeit it's only a cloud. And now the rest of the members from BDSA can move up towards the Rift Herald and they can try and put their tempo advantage on towards the map with having that Herald in the back. And with a relatively slow game so far, I mean, you'll take a two, almost 3,000 gold. BDS Academy have very little to lose when it comes to these Cloud Dragons. It is not the most highly prioritized solo. Of course, it still provides value, but the fact that they're able to find a team fight there and then start at this Rift Herald really free of any pressure is excellent for them. And BDS Academy continue to absorb pressure even towards this bot side with our four members stacked up there getting not much it's just a casual uh, cross map coming through here they're trying to push x maddie away from resources in terms of the bot lane farm here because they know currently that bdsa is investing members to watch that rift Herald, and in turn that kind of leaves matty a little bit vulnerable where you get to have a window where you can try and take away some of the farm from him as Adam is able to clear up waves towards the top side, and we're seeing Rang Jun take to the side lane. And this is something that, while temporarily good, is uh, something that I don't want to see too much of, mainly because a zero in the side lane is something that we actually saw LDLC specifically avoid last game. Well, it can work because he's a very powerful champion, his escape potential is not nearly that of things like the Camille, like the Nar, and you would like more safety there than anything. And now oh we finally God. get that Rifter we talked about close with the charm. Rika not afraid to get aggressive. Some of the stuff we talked about, of course, was that him being a quite confident player back in the day. But we want to see more of that. And he shows a little bit of sign of life there. Now, it could still be a skirmish here, but that's just Shio clone. Less than a Teemo's hair away from maybe securing that charm underneath the tower. Everybody's going to be able to back off. BDS Academy were ready for a fight in this instance, but they'll take the tower instead. And that's what they've continued to do throughout this game. Three towers to nothing right now. Shio's still got clone available, so can feel confident moving in here. And actually Cyclones forward using the clone. Dream Erase starting off the, with the engagement as well. Memento gets hooked, gets charmed, gets locked up and taken down. BDS BDS Academy have a one for nothing and find themselves with no tier two, a tier one at their back either. They have gotten yet another tower, four to their name so far, picked up another bit of gold off a kill and now get the chance to reset. Yeah, they get the kill, they get the tower. You can only be happy about this. They're not losing anything on the cross map. They even get the teleport from Rangjun and I love the way they play that. They saw the teleport, they waited for it to kind of come through, then they killed the turret and they made Rangjun run for it. So once again, Map advantage just over to BDSA.
And what was an almost 3,000 gold lead now is an, now an almost 4,000 gold lead as BDSA continue to take down this standing gold and expand that, which is, the I think, the biggest marker of how they're trying to play this gold. For right now, though, we've almost casually hit the 20-minute mark, which is kind of funny because it feels like this game has been so slow that I wouldn't have expected Baron to spawn yet, just given the amount of action that we've had. And everyone's setting up for it regardless, and with Dreamer Race and Shio on the roam, this jungle support to duo will be able to make plays happen up towards this Azir who again is up top side. And that forces a teleport now. They can just back out of this play. They don't have to commit, but I mean they're posturing as if they want to. Alright, well we've got a Hextech ultimatum. Somebody's committing and it's a Mirage in the front lines. Shio gets melted, but Maddie from the back line on this Twitch is doing so much work with the ultimate having to flash away. The Heartbreaker takes him down and Memento now gets to take over his body. Another Heartbreaker does send him to his death, but Cody Sun on the side is splitting the fight with Rang Jun, who does get charmed up and taken down. BDS, though it was a crazy fight, still end up coming out with the win. Yeah, four for two there. You cannot be too happy, or you cannot be unhappy about that exchange coming through. And you saw it from BDSA. They kept posturing as if they baited Mirage to come into him. They were ready with Adam with the teleport. As soon as the fight get engaged from the side of Mirage, teleports come through instantly from Adam. Huge mechana in that instance too, really just setting up the rest of the members of his team. Got the chance to get a little bit of mid push before this dragon as well. A little bit of extra gold. BDS Academy come out very happy off the back of that. And they'll be able to even up the dragon score with Mirage just hitting the rift and starting to set up that counter vision around the Baron that we're expecting to become the focal point again. And it's going to be some time before they just straight up start it up. I hate, like, they don't, they have a tank, kind of pseudo tank in the Wukong with him now building the resource, uh, resistances as well. But you still don't want to just start up the Baron in a 5 versus 5 situation. There still is a lot of poke that you have to be worried about. You get the Seri W that scales with crit. You get the Asia Qs as well, combined with the Comet as well. So what we're really looking at before we get to the Baron is the fact that BDSA, they need to find a pickup. Um, so far though, they've been really good at doing that. I think they're very good at dictating their place and they have good aggression with confident commitment uh, to back that up as well. Since they've been able to manage their side lanes so nope. well, having lost no towers so far, I might say, they're still able to, like you talked about, find that pick that now sets them up for the Baron. The pings went down instantly and again, Goldborg. You're on the same page. You're on the same page as all these guys. You called it out in the draft. Now you're calling it out in the game. They get the pick. They go for the Baron. It's as easy as that. You're too kind. You're way too kind. I don't like it. <laughs> but, but now moving forward with the Baron. I don't think they can start it up instantly. It's still very few seconds before the death timers come through. So what they're really looking to do is probably just bait it. It's probably not going to work and they'll have to go back to their lane states. That's what it's looking like for right now. They did at least get the Oracle, or rather the, the Blue Ward down from quite far away, but Mirage now feel comfortable enough to start walking in here. Shio's gonna be able to start us off with an engagement for Raxo. Grand Exit takes him out and Charm does go wide. BDS Academy chased for a while, but having not gotten much, Bad Lulu is now right back up, ready to fight again, and there's going to be a large reset from the rest of the squad on BDS Academy to get themselves a little bit healthier in the items and set themselves up for the next pick that they're looking for. Yeah, and like, I think so far this game is just very BDSA um, focused in terms of the fact that, you know, they're the one who's setting the tempo. And I'm kind of looking at Mirage right now, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do you guys get back into this one? Because they still have good pick potential. If Rakan Memento... Uh, kind of teams up here together, they'll be able to finally, you know, potentially find a pick. The problem for them is, BDSA always grouped. And they're always finding picks. Raxo makes almost the same mistake twice, walking into the river with no vision. Last time it cost him the grand entrance, this time his life. And it's still a pick, but it isn't a pick that uh, provides a whole lot in terms of damage. So, we could see Mirage still try and take this fight if they want to contest BDSA's Baron. Yeah, but I think BDSA, they're looking to turn. They're not very confident in terms of 50-ing, 50-50-ing, and there oh. we have it. Nice exhaust on Reekers while keeps Cody Sam from being one shot. There goes the ult, and he goes over the wall. Still sub-100 HP. Reeker takes him out, but the Baron has already been turned off of on the other side as Bad Lulu was trying to make an entrance and didn't end up doing so. Look towards the bot side, though, because even with all this going on, Rang Jun's not anywhere close, and that lets BDSA start off this Baron once again in full confidence. 
in some of these split calls we've seen for Mirage, where it's like, well, four members wants to try and contest it, right? Rangjing has other plans where he try and get the turrets. Oh my god, Memento! What on earth? Finding the Baron Steel right at the moment when Mirage needed it most. The split call looked weird, but it worked out because now you've got a, a Nazir that's side lane split pushing that's already walked all the way up to the inhibitor tower and who now has Baron. I mean, that's such a chat move from Momentum. He committed a flash over the first wall and then hard broke in towards the Baron pit immediately. That was all the resources you can go for to get it over the walls, and that meant you had no way of getting out. So if he swap, if he failed that play, that was going to look like the worst play in existence because it works out due to him finally getting the steal there. It looks absolutely gorgeous. What a commitment. It's the memento clutch factor that now, I, I suppose, has kept Mirage in the game. But you were talking before not about what, t what it took to keep them in the game, but what it took to really find themselves some sort of an advantage, some way of winning it. The scaling was something that we could rely on earlier. Do you still feel like that's the case? I mean, now when you can siege up and you have the Asir where you can take down a mid lane turret, you can then open up your passive with the sun disc coming through. Definitely allows yourself to get way more aggressive as we're seeing here. Exactly what they're doing. Four members strong in this mid lane, and BDSA are struggling to answer. Shio's on the flank, but not confident enough to engage. If you lose this fight, you could lose so much more. Reeker's gonna pop over the wall, does land the charm, but gets engaged on on the opposite end. Raxo being able to use that grand entrance to stop the Ari from committing to the play. It is an ultimate used from Matty as well, and so many resources expended to find no kills. Yeah, and at the same time, they lose their top lane turret. The sieging continues. There's still a Baron powered siege minion coming through, and they need to take care of that if they don't want to lose their tier 2 turret. Maddie's working on it. Does end up taking that last auto. The Sun Disk causing problems as well, keeping the push in Mirage Eliandra's favor. They're finally backing off, and with Bad Lulu committing to the bot side, they have lost duo lane pressure. So it'll be a small reset from them towards this Cloud Dragon and perhaps another fight. But the big problem right now is Matty doesn't have it all. Rico is still waiting for the cooldowns as well. So if Mirage is quick about it, they should be good. Oh, uh, if they could just get Bad Lulu here instead. It looks like it's going to be Bad Lulu in trade for the Dragon. Finally just get finished off as the Dragon falls. Memento smites it away. Rico looks for the charm. Finds one onto Raxo, who had that extra bit of mobility to get out. Memento's low as well. But the Azir wall separates Shio from the team. And BDSA get one kill in response to that Dragon that puts Mirage Eliandra on soul point. Clutched off from Rangjin there. If he had not come up with that Emperor's Divide, well... We, could, we would get a fight. We would absolutely get a fight. Rang Jun, now Emperor's Divide. Less is lifeless, and so is his AD carry. Cody Sun taken out, opens up BDSA to crack the base in a way that Mirage Leandro couldn't before. Yeah, all of a sudden, Tier 2 gone. Tier 3 is going to be gone at the same time. Inhibitor now. They're naked that they should be able to take care of. They can move down towards the bottom side afterwards if they're looking for it, but 30 second death time was on Rang Jun and Cody Sun. They Are might they just be for looking it? for the end. It looks like that's the goal right now. Shio doesn't have the ultimate just yet. Instead, big knockup from Raxo buys a little bit of time, but the first Nexus Tower has fallen. Bad Lulu goes on the engage, gets blown up by Maddie, and a nice hook from Dream Race pulls Memento right back into the jaws of the beast. That's the ace completed, and that is an unexpected win from nowhere from BDSA Academy. It came out of nowhere, but it was expected from the early game we had. I think it just got way too sloppy towards the mid mm -hmm. to late game, and all of a sudden, that clutch deal from Memento kept them in the game. But I don't think it was enough to fix the issues that we still saw coming through from Mirage and BDSA. They continue relentless. They find their team fighting. And Adam on this knob was a monster towards the end.